this guys welcome back to the Watford way today we've got your Burnley versus Watford match preview big thanks to Richard from the no nay never podcast for coming onto the channel I'll leave their link in the description below and while you're down there also let me know your score prediction for the game so thanks for watching make sure you subscribe and enjoy the video Good afternoon, everybody. My name's Richard Steele, and I'm from the No Name Ever podcast. Uh, Burnley FC season ticket holder and travel up and down the country uh, watching the Clavets at away games. Uh, firstly, before we do get on to the football, I just want to mention um, the disgraceful incident that tarnished our club um, last night with the with the plane and the banner that went over um, the, the Etihad. Uh, really, really disappointing uh, to see actions like that. Um, from from our fan base, and even though it is a small minority of the fan base, it still puts um, you know a real stain on the club, and, and rightly so. Um, and I know Ben Mee come out after the game, giving a really powerful message to those supporters, really condemning the incident. Um, and, and Burnley also issued a powerful statement saying they'll work closer with the police to issue lifetime bans to any of those supporters. Um, so in and, it, and the majority of Burnley fans are absolutely. Um, also um, ashamed and, and, and appalled of that banner that went over the ground last night and, and in fully uh, supportive of, of the Black Lives Matter uh, movement. And we'll move on to football now, um, you know, which is what I'm here to talk about. Obviously, Watford um, at, at home on Thursday is going to be a really difficult test for us. You know, Wof Watford's a brilliant club, um, got family down in Hatch End. And it's an away game that he attend every single season. The people down at Watford are really friendly. It's a really good club with really good values, um, you know. And so it's always a real pleasure to go down to Watford and, and, and visit Vicarage Road. Um, in, in in terms of what Watford's been doing recently, I've been really impressed with how they've adapted under Nigel Pearson. So it was a really difficult start to this season, um, but you've really turned that round now, and hopefully um, you should secure your Premier League safety in the running. You've got some excellent players, um, Decore, Hughes, the two players I really like in midfield. I think Dawson's been a really good sign in at centre half, and obviously got experience in Ben Foster at goal. So, like I said, you're not completely safe um, at the moment, um, but I think that you know you should have enough in the running, especially with Villa, Bournemouth, and, um, and West Ham struggling down there to stay up, and I really hope you do. Now I'll move on to Burnley from the opposition view. Obviously, Sean Dice is someone who's very well known and well respected. Um, down at down at Watford. First, to come on to win by saying um, he seems a little bit unhappy at Burnley at the moment. Uh, for the first time, really, um, he's really come out and shown frustration and almost anger, really, to, to, towards the board and in the light of the current contract situation. Um, we've we've always run on a low squad numbers. Um, I think Dice likes that because he likes work with a squad, small squad, and due um, you know, and also due to financial reasons. Uh, we've you know we've just found out that five players are not going to be extending their contract. Um, Adam Ledskins, Joe Hart, Aaron Lennon, Jeff Hendrick, and Phil Bardsley. Um, the latter three are the ones that are a worry. Obviously, Lennon was a good squad player. He's not going to go. And then Hendrick and Bardsley, who started the majority of the games this season, are also not going to renew their contracts. And Dyche has really come out and, and, and has heard his frustration at the board for not getting this sorted earlier. And it leaves our squad really thin. Um, mirroring that with the fact that we've got four senior players out injured uh, with Robbie Brady Gun and Johan Berg Gunman's and two wingers who are out injured and uh, the two strikers with Chris Wood and Ashley Barnes it leaves us really thin on numbers um, if you've seen the bench that we put out yesterday you know we've really inexperienced bench couldn't even get nine substitutes and also having two goalkeepers on there so really not a good sign and we had to hand the Premier League debut to Josh Brown along the wing, who is normally a central midfielder. And I'll go back to Chris Wood. Um, he's a striker that's really underrated, I feel, um, by, a, by a lot of Burnley fans. Does a lot of hard work for us, runs the channels really well, holds the ball up. He's a real goal scorer in front and he's improved his technical ability this season. So I think we'll definitely miss him over these next couple of games and, and certainly on Thursday. So all, all all that in mind, with a little bit of turmoil off off the pitch in terms of contracts and the squad numbers looking really thin on the pitch, um, I think it's a good time for Watford to play us. To be honest with you, um, and Turf Moor is always a place where if if the crowd gets going, that makes it a hard place to come for the opposition team. And obviously, we're really going to miss that home support on on Thursday to get behind the supporters. 
I know you had a great victory last time um, out at Turf I think you beat us 3-1. Uh, so I'm, I'm expecting a, a really tough game again on Thursday. Um, so I think it's a really good time for Watford to come as players, like I said before. And if I was a betting man, I would put a little bit of money on Watford because I actually think you're in a better position to beat us. Um, good luck on Thursday, but not too much luck. And hopefully we can put... Um, the sour feeling of the of the game on last night behind us and concentrate on football. Thanks for having me on. Uh, good luck for Thursday and good luck for the rest of the season.